so before uh, going on uh, proceeding with the project uh, first i would like to uh, show what i have implemented uh, and then why i have taken that into consideration okay so i have made a document uh, so these are the progress till now so um, my project was improved file security uh, file uploads and security as we know um, earlier till now we are uh, handling the file uploads in a code tree that is uh, we are storing it inside our uh, file structure which is not at all uh, good for security and uh, scalable reasons so what we have decided is uh, since there were constraint of not using cloud so we have set up uh, our own storage server that is by using minio which is a s3 compatible uh, object storage which can be run locally with our app that is uh, when a, when our uh, server will be run in wherever it will be run it will run, run along with it the minio server will run along with it and uh, for that we have used docker storage it has been set up with docker to run in the uh, production environment as well as in the development environment and uh, to that since docker is not something that every contributor is familiar with initially so i have also implemented uh, running minio uh, with local run as we do uh, right now npm run dev so just the user has to do npm run min dev minio then the same application the server will run but along with minio server having uh, running along with it in the background so this is minio and uh, then we have implemented api integration and um, for api integration we have chose a hybrid approach that is using graphql which is uh, which is being implemented right now and along with it rest api and why we have chosen it is because graphql is um, when we send data in large files it is being sent as a json format which is uh, not efficient for large files so we have used rest with multi part form data and then coming to api integration i have come, i have done uh, graphql schemas uh, mo modified them for post for files etc and we have supported streaming files and this is for this is something that was not supported that is difficult to implement using graphql that is why we have chosen as a rest architecture for just for uh, uploads that is uh, we will be having just one rest uh, a rest endpoint that is slash upload Uh, through which we will be uploading everything related to file uploads will be handled handled by you. So these are the things that has been implemented. I, I'll show you the flow along with how uh, things are done. Uh, first of all, I'll show you a video for Docker setup because uh, for running it with Docker and with uh, locally, I like to change some uh, environment variables and it becomes uh, a bit difficult. Uh, so I've recorded a video for Docker setup. which also so so this is a uh, a docker setup where i have set up the minio along with uh, our app we we'll just we just have to we have to uh, variables environment variables that is uh, for minio and when we will be running it locally by npm run dev so we just need to use the correct endpoint and then uh, we will be starting with the mongodb and redis uh, i guess this is the wrong video this is the wrong video sorry yeah as you can see uh, mongodb along with other as you can see uh, it is working and this is uh, using the minio setup and then I'll, i'll just show you the flow uh, along with it i will show you on uh, the current progress so this is what post uh, i've implemented first the post uh, feed management um, where we have implemented the minio uh, and file uploads so i'll just run it in in run so uh, there was one error which a uh, concern post feed management and that was uh, it was uh, we were facing again the refreshing error if any uh, other contributors had uh, faced it it was because of the post feed management uh, the application was continuously refreshing which was fixed and uh, let me show you the flow how it is 
working first the user interacts with the the front end uh, by creating a post like if we add a test post test user file uh, let's say apple So as you can see, uh, this post has been uh, uploaded. So how this is being done at the back end is uh, first the user interacts with the front end, gives the the file, it is it goes to the server, then server checks if if the same file is uh, existing in the database, then uh, then what it does is uh, it returns the same file file same reference which we use it uh, to refer to that um, particular file. We do not upload the same file so what we do is we create a hash uh, we generate a hash and then store it in the minio we verify with the minio and then check that if it does not have any existing file same similar file then upload a new file otherwise we just uh, increase the reference count indicating that this file this particular file has been used at multiple documents so this this returns in the id in the object and uh, this is how the creation works. And I'll show you how we manage it. Uh, if anyone of you have uh, interacted with the S3 console, it is similar to that. It, it will be live at localhost. Any uh, what, what, whatever will be our uh, the endpoint of that is base URL of backend that nine thousand one. This this will be live here. This is the Minio console where we can handle. We can. Uh, Create buckets, policies, etc. So this is Talava that I have uploaded. Uh, I just uploaded right now. Uh, yes. So this is the Apple that was just uploaded. But as you can see, the uploaded time is 16:59. But we, but we just saw that we upload. I uploaded this right now. So what ha what happened is this image was already present, and we did not de duplicate it. We did not had any duplicate of this in our. Uh, either in our uh, MongoDB database or in the MinIO store. So deduplication is also being handled here. Uh, if I have to show you the database, this, these are the files. Uh, this is the Apple that I uploaded right now, and this is count is one. If I upload one more image, same image, let's say duplicate Apple. We can see two images here, and uh, let me show you the post. We have duplicate post, and we'll be having uh, Apple. I guess it's test. Uh, this is the first Apple that we uploaded, and this is the second one, the duplicate. And for this, uh, there was no file uploaded uh, created. But we can see the reference count has increased by two. So that is how we are handling the deduplication. And another thing was uh, that we handled the error. That is, um, if uh, if say we are we are doing this in hybrid style. That is, we are sending the data with GraphQL and the file with REST API. So there could be a, uh, any reasons due to which uh, some one of the APIs uh, say throw an error. So how we are handling is uh, handling that is. I can show you. Uh, let's say I upload another. Let's say banana. This, and I don't uh, do pin post. This is uh, a requirement that uh, whenever we have a title information, we have to pin the post. And if I don't pin the post, uh, it will return an error. Say fail to create a post um, because it requires pin post. So then first we are up, we are uploading this file and then uh, sending the GraphQL request. So how we are handling is, if there is an error, we will upload a file. If, but if there is an error, we will delete it. You can see the file was deleted. And that is, this file was not saved. If I can show you, there is no entries for banana, the the new file that I added. Up. So that is how we are handling it. The error handling is being done here. Same with upload, update. Say if I update this, let's say I choose another image this one let's say we updated this okay 
this got updated. So uh, this image was already being used here, but uh, I've updated uh, updated this image as well. So what happens here is same deduplication concept is also applied here that this image was not again uploaded or new file was created, but we just reference it here. And the reference for this image, the Apple image, will be decreased. Let me show you that. Let me just update this matter. It is test. Yeah, this is the image. Uh, as you can see, this is GitHub, my GitHub PP as well. You can see the reference count is two because we have used it twice. And let's say we have we are updating this again. And let's say this time go with BlackBerry. No. Okay, this is this has been updated, and similarly, the reference count will also decrease. So that that is how we will we, we are handling the edit. And create. Uh, same is done with deletion. Uh, for deletion, uh, I'll just first show you. We have test image and test. So corresponding file will be uh, with This is and we see we can see the reference count is two. So if I delete this image, which is a duplicate image, say I delete the post. The post has been deleted, but we can see still this image is there. This image is persisting because we are handling it by decreasing the reference count in Blackberry, you can see this. So basically all the CRUD operation for post screen management has been done here. And also for uh, user, I'm implementing it for the user as well right now. All the images has is present. Basically, uh, we I have not uh, indicated the post uh, creation here. It's just fetching here. Then um, I'll be doing the all the other crowd operations in the user portal later. So this is the flow. Uh, actually, I went through all of them. That is that's it for myself. Okay, so I can't tell you how long we've had debates about getting file uploads fixed as to where it should be located and why, etc. And to see this happening is it's really good. I know Adarsh is going to have a lot of comments on this. If you could stop sharing your screen so we don't get infinity yeah, sure. mirror, that would be great. The uh, are the file uploads first going through the server and then to the main IO server, or are they directly being uh? Stream to the Minio server on upload. No, no, no. We have a server in between. We uh, are not interacting with the Minio. Yeah, isn't that wasteful? Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. It's it's wasteful, right? It's wasteful. Yeah. Uh, how so? Because uh, first the file is going to the server and then to the Minio server. Yeah. Uh, you can make it for that. It directly goes to to the Minio server from the client. Uh, we could do that. Uh, then we'll have to um, handle the authentication process again. I think I think uh, I think it is called pre-signed URLs in S3 uh, case. Yeah, yeah, right? it's pre pre-signed URLs. So, you think it's too complicated? I mean, it's not too complicated. Um, but the thing is, um, we, we we won't be able to stream if we do that way. If the client asks for a static file from the server, right? Okay. So do we do we provide them with the URL to the file, or do we stream the file to the client directly? Or we stream the file. If we if the client can directly get it from the MinIO server, then it would be much better, I think. The the GraphQL layer would only be responsible for uh, sending back the URLs to those files to the client, right? And then client can make a request to the MinIO server to get the file. Actually, GraphQL is not sending. Uh, GraphQL is only sending the uh, URL of the file that is uh, stored in our Minio server, and the rest is being handled by the rest, uh, the rest uh, API. No, no, no. I'm saying GraphQL will send the URL 
yes. to the client, right? For the uploaded file, and then client will make a request to the MinIO server or wherever, wherever the file is stored to get the file. That is how it's working, right? Uh, that is not how it is working right now. Uh, the client, the server will send the uh, link uh, to the client, and client that link is uh, using it goes through the server and then to the MinIO. And then okay. we get it to the server, then we stream it to the client. Yeah, but normally it doesn't work that way. I think wherever I've seen, I've seen that the client is directly able to fetch the file from the uh, uh, from the place where it's stored at. The file doesn't have to first go through the server and then to the client. Uh, yeah, I know. Um, uh, there, I think these both uh, methods are being used as standard methods in the industry right now. Uh, yeah. yeah, anyway, yeah, I think I just think it's a, a, uh, yeah. I, I, we could have a discussion on this uh, later on. And I think if if we um, agree on using just the uh, Minio server, uh, we could just change it to the pre signed URL and do. But the major problem would be the authentication process. We'll have to set up a uh, different authentication process. I mean, I mean, uh, if you if you think about it, if if you're streaming a 500 MB video from the MinIO server to the client. You first have to send that to the server, and then the server sends that to the client. Right? There are two hoops. There, uh, the file is traveling two hoops for no reason. It should be directly streamed to the client to prevent on uh, cost of streaming. Yeah, let's... the same. The same case is the same case is true for the for the, uh, when client is uploading the file to the server, it should directly go to the MinIO server instead of first going through the server and then from server to the MinIO server. Let's proceed with what MN has done, and there are some reasons for this. I understand that is more. Yeah, efficient. it's, not, it's I, not. It's not. A, it's not a. It's not a bad thing. Yeah, okay. it's just that yeah, it, this was an approach that was used in the old times, and nowadays it's not used like this anymore. Yeah, and, and the reason there, there's a number of reasons why I'd, I'd like to to make it this way. Firstly, it's I want to keep things simple for now, so that we just get the base. Uh, case working. We also have the uh, potential situation where there could be firewall rules. Um, if we're if it's locally hosted, that may not. That would have to be uh, um, modified, right? So, for example, if it went to a different port uh, for the individual server for the server itself, or, or a different IP address, then we'd have to tell people who are in doing the installation to open up yet more ports rather than just the HTTPS port. So in terms of simplicity from from uh, uh, from an end user who may not be that up to date with um, IT uh, principles, I, I think we should just leave it this way for now. I'm not saying that it can't be thought of in a different way, but I just, we are at a point where we're. I'm just saying to myself, thank goodness we've actually got file uploads working. And so let's try and make it as bulletproof as possible, and then we start thinking about ways to make it more efficient in, ter in terms of speed. And um, I think that'd be a good approach. But Aman, I, the, the thing that you just mentioned is that you, you said that if a file is greater than a particular size, you're not going to use GraphQL, you're going to use REST, correct? No, no, uh, it's, I didn't mean that. Uh, oh. Any file that can be uploaded will be uh, handled by REST. We do. We are not doing anything with the REST if it concerns file uploads. It will be handled. Everything relating to uploads uh, will be handled by REST. Right. Not but, right. But when you're doing the queries, it could be REST or GraphQL, correct? Uh, uh, when we are doing query, uh, just the link to that uh, resource is sent by GraphQL. Uh, but the fetching is done by REST. Oh, I see. All right. Okay. Okay. That that makes sense. Thank you for that clarification. I see where you have separate .env file settings for Docker and non-Docker. We are if this when this is implemented, we need to modify the setup script for for this new modification. Okay. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, for env, uh, we do not encourage on using uh, minio. Uh, with local run, uh, I think it should be uh, done with Docker itself. I've implemented it so uh, for the ease of uh, contributors, because not every, all of them are uh, familiar with 
docker so there is just one command and uh, everything will be run so in 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 the production environment and later on we'll remove that we won't be using uh, minio uh, without docker oh i see so that would mean that we would only be able to use the application in docker and nothing else the setup script needs to have that the, the documentation needs to say all of that and there, there are a number of things that we need to do if docker is away uh -huh. right we, we need to make a decision Fair, fairly square, like when you're ready for this thing to go into production on, at the end of jstock we need to make a decision as to whether we're just going to do docker and forget everything else because of because i understand the rationale for what you're talking about we just need to make sure that we make the right decision and make everybody aware of that from the beginning. Okay? Yeah. Well, this is, once again, this is another feature that has been plaguing us and not being able to work for quite some time. And I'm really glad to see that this has been fixed. 